Our guests for this hour are seated. And as we get into that conversation, we're going to welcome them with today's proverb. This is our final proverb from the country of Djibouti. A camel never sees its own hump. I know what I think. But it can see the hump of another camel. <laughs> Indeed. Mm -hmm. It can see the hump of another camel. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. Okay, so our guests this hour, before we ask them what they think about the proverb, Kero Muhoya is the co-founder and CEO of Fingo Africa Limited. Karibu and good morning. Thank you very much. And our other guest is Jane Jelagat, who is a director, consumer banking, Echo Bank Kenya. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. A camel never sees its own hump, Abby. Abby. Uh, by the way, the proverb doesn't have the word Abby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that was just my... Okay, is, so... Her ex, ex, that's an exclamation from the Nigerian <laughs> dialect that she speaks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jane, what, what do you make of this proverb before we come to you, Kiro? Mm, two things. Firstly, a camel... It means a camel is blindsided. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, firstly, that's what I would say. Secondly, mm. you don't see the reserve that you have, so mm. potential. So I would say it in two ways. Firstly, the camel cannot, is blindsided. You cannot see what, as, as all angles around you, mm. as a camel, albeit being so big. And secondly, I know what a hump is for. So it's a water reservoir. Oh. So you don't know how much more you carry. Someone else got to pick it for you. Wow. Yes. I love it. What about you, Kiro? Beautiful response from Jane. I know. <laughs> um, I, like, I like proverbs that are kind of ambiguous and have animals in them. Mm. Um, a camel can see its own hump. So I think for me, at the point I am in my life, it means that you have energy or power that you can't see. And sometimes you, you can see those uh, with it. Uh, so other camels with other humps. But yeah, you have your own. So rely on it. Mm. My goodness, I have to come the, fully I'm armed this morning. Exactly, <laughs> loaded, as you say, but I have to ask the question if you can't see your own potential, what then can you see? Well, you can't see it, but you can trust it, right? And if you could see it, then you would know where your limits are. Mm -hmm. But if you can't see it, you almost don't know where your limits are. Okay. I could try and add, mm. please. You cannot see your potential, mm. you see it. Mm. Uh, so what can you see? That's mm. why we need each other. So you can pick it out for me. Mm. Yeah. You need to live in a pack or a family of camels. Mm. Fantastic. And you can see others' potential. Oh, yes, of mm. course. There yeah. you go. And do you right. So mm. it's a, the issue then would be a blind camel. Mm. Yeah. That would then be the, be the, the twist. <laughs> yeah, that would be the stitch yeah. in this. <laughs> All right. So, right. okay. Getting into the conversation this morning. I mean, thanks for that. I think it's great always when we can open up these things and see the different meanings that then have apply to different people um, and then come together on that and say, okay, well, it can be for you and this can be for you. Both of you have come together this morning to have a conversation about um, inclusion, financial inclusion, which is one of the big issues when it comes to people getting into their businesses, uh, people then taking on a step towards being able to find many things, whether it is capital, whether it is, you know, credit, etc., etc. So, Jane Echo Bank, Keho Fingo Capital, <clears throat> and uh, saying you've come together, explain to us this partnership and what exactly um, it means. And maybe we can start with you, Jane. Okay, Echo Bank is a Pan African bank. We are looking at 33 markets across Africa. So just the sheer size and potential that we have for the region makes me a very great partner for Kiro. Mm. Then I look at it like the generation that I haven't quite tapped into is the youth. So that whole thinking around who don't I have in the bank, either f for sheer um, lack of uh, interest in banking mm. or we've excluded them from coming into bank because of brick and mortar bureaucracy and all that stuff. Mm. So I looked at it and said, what is this niche that we haven't included, like you say? Mm. And you've pointed out right that it's a big thing to include everybody, putting everybody together. The youth have been left out. So I looked at it and said, hey, why not partner with Kiru? Mm. Yes. To just make sure that everybody then is banked. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Kiru Fingo Africa. What's that? 
So Fingo Africa is effectively a youth uh, platform, an app that young people can download, uh, sign up to a bank account, which is effectively an EcoBank bank account in under five minutes and transact for cheaper, as well as accessing other financial services. So why is this important? How did Fingo start? Um, a few years ago, when I was a little younger, I was trying to open my very first bank account. Mm -hmm. And it was a process. It was a process. It took me about three weeks. I had to travel to a couple of different branches. And I stepped out of that process feeling very frustrated. CG photocopy guy there. CG, you left this document. Um, and it was very obscure. Mm. And as I stepped out of that process, I could not help but feel a little frustrated because um, as we come to understand the world today, the next generation is digital. We are digital natives, um, they, you know, it especially accelerated during COVID, where people have been working remotely, um, especially young people. Mm -hmm. All the tools they use, everything they want is fast and digital. But this process of getting such an essential service seemed to me slow mm -hmm. and seemed to me particularly um, unfair for this digital generation. So the idea of Fingo started there mm -hmm. and we looked at okay so i'm this one young person who's experienced this how many other people are experiencing this of a similar age and turns out it's not a niche market mm. 70 percent of africa's youth the median age of most of our uh, our continent and the countries here is 19. so you actually have a huge population of unbanked young people because the barriers are high mm -hmm. and so we created a digital platform uh, an app called Fingo and we needed a partner uh, to be able to enable us to offer banking services in a regulated safe and secure manner and so that was the genesis of Fingo and the genesis of this partnership with EcoBank. Mm. So Jane what was it that Fingo then helped you know to explore or to imagine that the bank was not already thinking about or doing on its own? So two things. Firstly, like he said, mm. they identified the need and the potential. Mm. Uh, just like the camel who could not see their, uh, their harm, maybe I wasn't or we were not seeing it as scalably. Like mm. he says, you say, I said niche. He said it's not. 70% of the population in Africa is youth. So he, he came and defined that for us and he just didn't come and give us a problem statement he actually came with a solution and said guys i have a digital solution there are more mobile phones across africa than there are light bulbs mm. how do we use what we have on our hands to make sure we include everybody so then the, 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 the development side started like he mentioned lots of regulatory and compliance thing building capability so the two things he brought was the problem and a possible solution so all i needed to do is tailor make banking to this collabo allowed them a place a sandbox or if you like a place where they can we can design everything we have that as an innovation hub we tried a lot of stuff two years two and a half years Kira. Yeah. yes through the regulation on all that test stops test stop and we moved the third thing that this guy's finger brought is resilience let me tell you i haven't seen hardworking youth before <laughs> it has challenged how i raise my children right. this guy is work late you know mm. having uh three time zones across africa mm. and we plan to launch this in kenya and then move it across testing all those dynamics a lot of times our testing or live period of tests were when all of us the entire africa was asleep mm. these guys were awake so that was as at a personal level something attractive that this youthful team brought mm -hmm. a resilience and a work ethic that i haven't seen in many generations uh particularly in the age that they function in mm -hmm. yeah why is banking necessary for the youth they have money did you know your money is that all and then they need to send money across everybody else. They need to transact. Firstly, they have money. Mm. And it cannot be in just their wallets. Mm. Secondly, they are the next future. You need to teach them how to manage, manage their, their coins. Mm -hmm. And they also transact. They, they, they trade. Everything you've said so far is how this would benefit the bank. How does it benefit them? Oh, now this is their, the convenience of taking account, financial accounting, financial management, planning your future, saving, looking at the agility of doing it without brick and mortar and bureaucracy. <coughs> so banking is actually 
for as long as you're an adult, mm -hmm. yes, it would. You do it by yourself. If you're younger, you can do it with the support of an ad another yeah. adult. Yes. Yeah. So they need it, just like you and I. I do. can contribute to that, CK. Sure. So if you look at the average young person, they are ambitious and they want to create wealth. And the basis of creating wealth is understanding wealth. Let, let, let's pause for a second. They want to create, create wealth or they want to acquire wealth. They're not the same thing. They want to get rich. Mm. Yes. They want to build businesses. Mm. They want to innovate. And they will effectively want to give, put income into their pocket mm. so that they can support themselves, mm. their families, mm. build houses, buy cars. The, the next big consumer group in, I, I would say, the world mm. is going to be this African youth. Yeah. And without proper banking, then they will be unable to create that wealth or they will struggle to create that wealth. They will use cash. They will have no credit history. They will not be able to build scalable businesses. Mm. They won't be able to manage their personal finances. And so their wealth creating potential will be damaged mm. or at least hampered. Okay. So based on those things that you've said, because I heard somebody say something again, maybe, maybe, maybe for the 15th time that I've heard it, but it made some sense where they said now, you know, go towards businesses that are solving <coughs> excuse me that are solving a problem yes. in the society isn't it so what problems then would the finger app then be solving based on your experience years ago where you tried to open an account and it didn't work so now you have this app what's it solving so the first thing it solves is that account opening <coughs> time and effort so instead of visiting a branch and taking documentations and spending you know two days to three weeks in my case you spend five minutes mm. you download an app you can sign up virtually so you can do your know your customer which is your kyc effectively letting us identify who you are virtually and you can get an account in under five minutes so that's the first uh stop the second third and fourth are you can transact directly from that app so you can go into merchants and pay directly to them mm -hmm. uh, that's reducing the fees that you would incur primarily from uh, multi using multiple other transaction methods you can save and there's a long roadmap to let you access business accounts uh, investment options as well as sending money across uh, the, the continent so the idea really is um, it saves you time it saves you effort and it saves you money mm. and in the end also being able to have a a banking history that can allow you a lot, get some facilities. Mm -hmm. We don't look at you as just youth now. We are growing with you, and that's what Fingo is solving for. So we, you'll come in maybe as a uni student or somebody taking on small businesses earlier on, but we know as Ecobank that you're going to grow with us, so we'll get into more complex solutions. It will start with softer lending over drafts, but we, of course, are building a, a history that we can even give you borrowing in the, in the long run. Okay. Yes, so that's what we are solving for. What I hear so far is pleasant. It's, it's music to my ears, but I'd like to see how it works. So walk me through this. Okay. All right. The app, the people behind it come to EcoBank. Through the app, they are able to access the banking facilities of EcoBank. They may be university students, they may be college students, they may be people who are just straight out of high school. Yes. Now, what is it that you provide for them to help them understand banking, the system, the risks, the benefits, the trajectory of growth that you've mentioned, because it isn't as though if I open an open account today and I'll, I'll will know all that. Of it course. doesn't happen that way. Yes. But more importantly, the discipline that comes with everything that you're saying, more so when facilities have been offered, the discipline of repaying it. Yes. Okay, so walk me through that. So two things we, we have scheduled. You'll have pop-ups in the app mm. that tell you, did you know? You can save for a goal or what is your goal and then we take you through how you then save towards that goal and then we give you rewards so what we have built with with uh, the fingo app is that when you meet a certain goal you'll get a kicker from us telling you hey well done 
this is it and we can give you a certain discount, a better rate. So you drive that discipline. That's one thing. So several pop-ups, the use case I've given you is the one of building the culture mm -hmm. of, uh, of savings. So there are multiple other use cases we want to put in wealth management, uh, telling you that this is a destination uh, 15 years, how do you start it now? What are the multiple um, instruments of savings that you can do? So pop-ups on how to and why to. Mm -hmm. The other way that we want to do it outside the app is when onboarding. Like, look, today we are having this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways. So we will go into institutions or places where we have populist uh, target market, like unis. We want to partner with them. We go in and we take you through a financial management class, possibly 30 minutes. And we have the EcoBank Academy that will come in and help us do that, both for businesses, people who want to go solo on businesses or want to do partnerships or they want to do it as individual bank, uh, 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 bank accounts. We take you through that academic process and then tell you why you should then uh, come into EcoBank through the Fingo app. Mm -hmm. So we'll have the on-app education and then we'll do the off-app education, mm -hmm. particularly on that. Now, continuously as you grow a certain amount, which we have built back end, we will then give you more complex solutions. We say, hey, we see you've reached 200,000 or you got your higher education loans board uh, loan facility disbursed into your app. Did you know that you can plan it like this other than eating it all up at once? Yeah, so those are the things we then identify cal 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 character based behaviors through analytics which we have in the app to then determine how we educate you and tell you the opportunities therein within the app. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> how does this differ, Akiru, from other solutions that are in the market? today based on the things that you said what's different um, that then folks will be able to take an advantage of yeah that's a great question and what's different is that it's youth specific yeah. and so we really had um, a good time designing this application so that it feels African and it feels African youth and so what that means is we looked at what are the most popular apps on the continent right now in kenya in nigeria in ghana it's social media applications so you'll find that instagram whatsapp tiktok these are the applications that young people one on board to without any issues like you know you never have to visit a you know, Facebook shop to onboard. So the onboarding is easy. And two, they're social. Mm -hmm. So people love to connect. And money is an incredible way to connect. So what we've done is we've made the app, one, as easy to onboard to as the social media apps. And two, we've made them social. So when you open the app and you're sending money to your friends, it feels like a chat. So mm -hmm. like a WhatsApp chat. Mm -hmm. You can add different uh, messages attached to the money. You can add different uh, GIFs. Uh, you can, you know, when you send money with, you know, a mobile wallet and you have to call them and say, Umepata, mm -hmm. you can say thank you within the app. You can just tap a button and say thank you. And when your friends sign up, you get a pop-up, hey, so-and-so has just joined Fingo. And then beyond that, one interesting thing that we've been able to do, and this ties into financial literacy. I don't know if you both remember the first time you opened your first bank account or the first time you began learning about financial literacy. Mm. Um, it, it's usually not something people give you in a curriculum. It's something you kind of learn by making mistakes goal, of, right? Yeah. You make a mistake, you're like, oh, and then you look back and you track your expenses and you realize, oh, you know, I made a mistake. So the f what we've been able to do is give you visibility of your spending. So if I go on my app right now, for the last 30 days, I can see who I've sent money to the, the most or the one uh, merchant I've uh, spent money on the most. And that visibility is almost... Um, it, it's, it gives you... Uh, it builds character, one. Mm. And two, it designs behavior. So the analytics, the ability to just see your spending, the ability to even uh, gamify uh, different aspects of financial services mean that the behavior and the learning curve um, is a lot, um, it, it's, it's designed for this age, right? Yeah. And minus that, there's a lot of different African features we've put in. So even the look and feel feels, you know, you want a young person to kind of download it. And by the time they're opening, the, you know, they have the feeling of Nietu, like it's ours, it yes. feels like ours. And so that look and feel has also been a very important part of it. Mm. Are you saying, therefore, that when people interact with your app, mm -hmm. part of what the app does, it, it collects data, so it analyzes, meaning at the end of the day, you will know over a period of time 
that client XYZ has his preferences. Yes. I'm saying this because I look at apps, like I'll give an example, Amazon. Yes. If you interact with Amazon, after a while, they start suggesting things for you. They tell you, what do you think? So Buy another hat. Yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The hat they've already assumed you have, they won't tell you about the hat. <laughs> They'll tell you about another accessory right. that could complement the hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. they might tell absolutely. You socks, <laughs> gloves, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. jacket. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm thinking is, mm -hmm. if it's a financial app, yeah. is it able to do that for the client? Is it able to say, you seem to spend on this, meaning it's figured out this is how you go about spending your money. Yes. And is it able to then analyze that data and make suggestions and give indications to the client or does it give indications to you, the person who manages the app or the bank? So that's a very powerful statement. And I think that statement is where all the products and services we're using today should go into, mm. which is personalization. So you download, um, you know, an app and it's banking, but actually the more you use it, the better it becomes for you, mm -hmm. the more personalized it becomes. So it feels like you have a, a banking partner. You feel like your app is getting to know you better. So the data is still, you know, a very new, uh, people are still figuring out what to do with data and the personalization, as you mentioned, you know, with Amazon or even some of the other social, uh, apps we use, they personalize it and they target it to you know effectively sell uh, goods and services that would benefit you such as you know your hat or other accessories <laughs> um, so what you we know, would I do have other clothes on <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, we can see <laughs> thank you though <laughs> yeah so, so the idea of financial services mm -hmm. is how do we how do we take this data yes. and give you a healthier experience mm -hmm. and actually help you create wealth mm -hmm. and i think something that um, has been done really well across the world is this idea of you know it's if that's effectively what a credit history is it's taking your past consumption your past income and then giving you uh, a level of credit that you can access access responsibly so the credit history is part of that but there's many other things there's you know how you know we can recommend the best saving options for you we can recommend the best uh, kind of you know types of accounts for you we can you know if you want to buy a car we can recommend hey this is you know within the range there's so many options and then you add artificial intelligence into that to you know make the data a lot more personalized then you you really have almost a financial advisor a financial education platform on your app so it's really powerful uh, we're still discovering you know the, even the power of that but spot on it's something that we would like to personalize this experience for the conversation we are having um it seems to be premised on an understanding that everyone who seeks banking service will follow the rules and they will have no problems. Now, people do have problems. By the time you talk about credit rating, it means you want to determine whether some people are credit worthy. So now, someone may land themselves in a situation where they are in their category of individuals who are not credit worthy. They may end up uh, being listed by this delightful uh, institution called CRB. Mm. Now, how then do you use this partnership to one, try and prevent, because you will know patterns, you'll have understood what people do and how they get into those things. How do you have a preventative approach to ensuring people don't get there? Some though do. And when they do, how do you walk them out of it? Let me invite Jane to mm. take this Okay. First. So first step is I'm trying to capture you much earlier before you do what people do later. So that's why this is for youth. So I'll get you when you're still, like master of proverbs, you burn the fish while it's still young, mm. right? <laughs> uh -huh. So you pick it, you pick this, this youthful person and start training them much earlier. We had that conversation. Mm. So they're, like you say, some people just don't get these lessons very well. And uh, like Kiru said, after some time, you start unlearning stuff that you picked on the way. Mm. So then let's say you're, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gone bad. Mm. And uh, you have adverse mentions everywhere, both CRB and your bank account looks funny, but you're becoming 
more, what do we say? You're becoming more enlightened and you want to get out of this. How do I walk you out of the naughty <laughs> corner? Yeah. So the best way and what, uh, let me give a bit of background. So credit is ability to pay, character, and trust. Yeah. Are you able to pay this facility? Mm. Do I look to you and trust that indeed you're going to do it? So you haven't done this rogue behavior before. Mm -hmm. Can I trust you? And then I just look at your character, looking at trends in banking and many other things that we look at to then say, are you credit worthy or credit not so worthy yet? Mm -hmm. So how do I walk a client out of it on the Fingo app is then start giving you conversations of, hey, Utachoma. The, the, you should actually see what Kiru's app does. It actually tells you the way you're going, you're overdrawing this thing. Or oh, it's going out of trend. So start, start speaking, speaking to you about behavioral things mm. that will adversely affect your character. But let's say, like he's, uh, he has asked, how you're already adverse. How do I walk you back? Mm. He's telling you, stay on with me. Don't go multi -backed. Stay on with me. Let's rebuild this together. What, are you, what is your goal to borrow? How can I start helping you build that behavior? Mm. And it's the conversations within the app. Outside the app, it's still educations. Educational posters, why, how do I get myself after, out of that? A lot of the people get it wrong by moving banks. Mm -hmm. So you mess up here, you move here. But like you say, CRB goes and picks your history where you goofed earlier. And tells this other bank, hey, you see this guy <laughs> or this lady? Yeah. She's done this in Bank mm. X. So stay in one place. And build back trust, build back, build back character. The bank will give you money. Okay. Um, Carol, just looking at behavior, right? And looking at this app. Behavior, in this <coughs> sense, what's happening with, you know, credit facilities and all that. Let's look at behavior when it has come to the issues of digital fraud. By the fact that you are tinkering with um, any kind of technology that anybody then can get into the back end and start to fiddle with. How then does this protect, how then does this assure folks who are getting onto this app that, number one, the information is secure and that their money is safe? Yeah, that's a great question and a question we spent, I think, two and a half years trying to answer. And the, the simple answer to that is um, we're relying on uh, EcoBank, which is um, effectively you know, one of the largest uh, banks on the continent with over 30 million you know, people uh, using its services and a strong, strong uh, banking and payment system. So enable, uh, to be able to offer the services digitally, we had to combine uh, what EcoBank offers, which is that robust, um, strong platform, yeah. um, and be able to combine that with a digital presence, which is a platform called Fingo. Mm -hmm. And Fingo in itself now uses really advanced tools to be able to one detect monitor and onboard uh, the right type of client and the right type of client is as determined by different criteria so the first criteria obviously is that it's a bank account and you need an id you need to do your uh, uh, your basic um, know your customer so when you walk into a branch you usually have a form we just digitize that we get to know who you are and we do this with uh, technology that is able to effectively scan uh, your documents for you and scan um, the features of your face as well to mm. be able to identify you and from there your funds your transactions are processed by this incredibly robust system that ecobank has developed and been um, regulated and that's kind of the last piece which mm. is has the institution been regulated has the product been certified and yes it has and it's been done so by um, the authority that uh, holds the standard within the country of that security so so to the young people and to the others who are joining financial services, um, you have to join <coughs> services that are regulated, services that are assured, and services that are protected. And by there's only one authority, which is a central bank, and um, partnering with EcoBank gives us ability to do that and serve our clients securely. Mm. So how many... I mean, it's been two and a half years of, you know, being in the trenches, essentially, like you said, right? And then trying to deliver the solution uh, to young people. Does that mean it's only young people who can use that? No. 
actually. Mm. Uh, we've gotten interest from um, all sorts of uh, different potential clients. So business owners, uh, people wanting to send money even from the diaspora, um, people of, uh, e even young people. The, mm. the word young can mean anything. Mm. Uh, young at heart, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think that's, that's probably what we would say, young at heart. So please feel free to download the app and check it out. Um, but in general, so the way we looked at young people is that young people are going to be the early adopters um, and it's actually going to be a product that transcends the age group and is used by people that find it useful mm. so is it only useful for a young person not to visit a branch mm. no mm. other people find it useful is it only useful for young people to um, have access to their financial data to have access to multiple products in one app no other people find it useful it's it's young people because they're early adopters and the origin of us was this this started from young people and will actually transcend um different uh echelons of society mm -hmm. what, sure. what have you done or what do you do to guarantee the safety of this data that you have so the data security is guaranteed by various um, uh, authorities mm -hmm. and to be able to even hold that data there's various standards mm -hmm. that you have to um, uh, you have to abide by so for example the communication authority has standard the central bank has standard and most um, most importantly um, uh, the bank that we are with ecobank has standards and the highest standards and so those um, the combination of those certifications the combination of um, the rigorous process of, of testing and um, ensuring that this uh, standards are met yearly um, is what effectively guarantees the safety for the client mm. I'd like to also add that we also do the other end while I'm holding the rigorous side of making sure your data is safe with me as a bank. We also educate you. You've seen a lot of cyber mm, crime great. going on. Yes. So there's a multiple steps of authentication, both text, uh, uh, those single use, what we call the OTP. Yeah, the pin that is sent on your text. We back up with a Gmail. You have a two-step authenticator, like you said, biometric, to just make sure that your data doesn't leak, mm. whether by your own doing or by the side of the bank. So on the side of the bank is very rigorous. Mm -hmm. So on the app, like you said, two and a half years later, we've made sure that all the customer data and education is actually safe. Okay. And we continue that education process. Right. Echo Bank is a Pan-African bank. Yes, we are. Right. Um, around the, obviously around the continent. Fingo Africa is also now we're looking at a continental company with an app that can be used in different countries. Yes. What is the appetite for digital banking in the other countries where there is currently representation and where you would like there to be representation for Fingo? Yeah, that's a it's a great question and it's a, it's something I wondered all those years ago when I was first um, thinking of Fingo. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, how many young people are there across Africa that might want financial services and are struggling to access financial services. Mm -hmm. And because the demographics are so similar, because you will find that a 19 year old in West Africa, a 19 year old in um, Southern Africa or a 25 year old in or a 30 year old, any of these um, different demographics are going to want a very similar experience. They're going to want digital first, they're going to want seamless. They're going to want um, uh, a, a fully uh, digital and a fully end-to-end um, -end, uh, uh, kind of experience that is digital. And so the demand factor is also driven by this youth population explosion. <laughs> um, I think one thing I was talking about uh, with my friends recently is that um, there's a there's currently a tour going on by a really famous artist Beyonce. You may have heard of her. It's called, Maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called the Renaissance Tour, mm, right? Mm. And we're looking at Africa as a period of time where young people are getting empowered. They're accessing education digitally, mm -hmm. um, so the barriers of uh, education are falling. Uh, young people are creating businesses. Young people are creating art. Young people are creating um, all sorts of different um, uh, subject areas that could be considered a renaissance. And so we would want to uh, 
empower these young people with the financial services to be able to achieve that. So if you're an ambitious young person across the continent and you want banking services that speak to you and you want to be part of this, um, you know, what we're calling African economy, African youth economy, or African renaissance, then Fingo becomes the platform that you can use and not stress about. I would like to just add something. So like you said, what's the appetite? Mm. We're actually working with them to translate uh, the app in into French, French first, yes. mm -hmm. then. Yeah, so we're doing then French, Portuguese, I think. Portuguese yeah. um, we'll be going across different African <laughs> countries um, and being able to use Ecobank's network. Um, uh, Ecobank has banking licenses across um, uh, 33, uh, Africa, uh, 33 <laughs> plus African countries. Yeah. And if there's young people in those countries, um, which they are, then banking services become essential to their lives and we're able to then provide that, tailor that to their country and provide that to them. Mm. Okay, you have an app. It's working. What is the point at which you will feel you've reached saturation? Saturation meaning saturation. we're happy or we're full? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It, it, is, it is an open ended question. I want you to uh, fill in the blanks. Okay. As you see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So by, by 2050, over half of the world's young people will be in Africa. So that's a billion plus young people, and young by UN definition is under 35, mm -hmm. will be in Africa. That's over 1 billion people. That's the most young people there'll ever be in the world in a single continent. That's the largest working population. Those young people are going to spend. Those young people are going to create businesses. Those young people, if empowered, educated, are going to make a large economy. Mm -hmm. Is there a financial services institution right now you can think with a billion people? That has a billion people, like a billion customers, or yeah. like a billion people on the platform? A billion people on the yeah, platform. I think we'd be hard pressed <laughs> to find one, right? Yeah, we'd be very hard pressed. To find very one. hard yeah. pressed. Yeah. And especially new clients. You can't find that anywhere else. So the idea of saturation is you almost have to look at it in generations. This generation will explode and so will the next. And the way the population will grow is that you will not be able to saturate. Um, and because it's digital, you will not be able to saturate the number of people that can potentially be on it. Mm -hmm. So we have really ambitious goals. We want to serve hundreds of millions of young people and we want to do this over the long term. And we think mm -hmm. that this youth um, demand will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And so we will we will aim to serve hundreds of millions of young people over the next um, couple of decades, if not centuries. Mm. Okay, now, from, <laughs> sorry, please go ahead. From his perspective, is targeting young and continues to look at young as they grow. I, on the other hand, from the Ecobank side, I have 33 markets. I have another app altogether other than just the Fingo app, which is my normal banking app, the Ecobank mobile banking app mm -hmm. should you be on it you will see the 33 countries in there for me saturation is if i track penetration of banking remember financial inclusion is what i'm solving for and then i am actually the real true pan-african bank mm -hmm. so saturation for me is when i leave up my name mm -hmm. and truly create financial inclusion across all demographics not just the youth, and across all my 33 countries mm. and beyond. If I can do the entire Africa 50-something countries, why not? That will be saturation, but that's something way above my pay grade. Something to aspire to. Yes, <laughs> but by all means, I must be leading bank across Africa and all my presence markets. How will then you be able, because tracking then informs, <clears throat> right? And then with the information and data, you're then able to know, are things working, right? Or do we want to go in a different direction? So then with this, from the institution side and then from the app side as well, are you then able to follow up and look at the trends, look at the behavior of people who get on this app and then be able to say, okay, this is working. It's exactly what I wanted to do. I actually know. So are you able to pick up that information and then now use that to inform action that you will then take in the future? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So when we look at what use cases young people will use it for, 
you're able to then direct them into different features on the platform and young people could be and and there are different sorts of young people um you know your average um 30 or 25 between 25 to 30 old will probably want more advanced services will probably want access to um uh, a form of uh, hustle um, account a way to develop um sending money a way to develop credit um and but Again, your 19 to 25 year old will also want something else. And then someone above 30 will want something else. So the idea is actually, how can you use the data that they present to you to tailor an experience for them, to give them uh, a kind of unique experience that they're able to have almost this one-stop shop of financial services. And because we are able to lean onto all these markets and so many wonderful products that Ecobank offers, mm -hmm. we can create that end-to-end one-stop-shop experience for you make it quick make it easy make it affordable and make you feel like you have this um incredible financial partner that can do anything you can imagine mm -hmm. we know how banks make money yes how do you make yours the exact way the banks make money mm -hmm. <laughs> and how is that exactly <laughs> <laughs> because you're not a bank <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, Jane, how do banks make money? <laughs> you go fast. <laughs> okay, uh, so if 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 you were to put into uh, ChatGPT, how do banks make money? It yes. would probably say something like, uh, "Banks banks make money from interest." Mm. So if interest on loans, interest on managed assets, they charge you for everything they do for you. Put it simply that way. Right? It's a service, right? Yes. So, so charge. services charge and mm. banking and financial services is one of those that charge. Mm. However, um, the fee and the amount you charge um, is what depends on, you know, is what gives you as a consumer the choice as to where do I bank with. Mm. And the fee can sometimes look like it's what's on the paper, but the fee is also in terms of effort and difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It pays. <laughs> what are you solving for? <laughs> the fee is also I am, effort and I difficulty. I understand the discussions around money are not always easy. Mm. Yeah. Yes. But you are not doing this pro bono. Yeah. Oh, by all means. It yeah. isn't a voluntary mm. service mm. Mm -hmm. where you have been spoken to spiritually and you're now being led to provide this service. It's a good service. Yes. It's a service that's supposed to make you money. Yeah. So it's important for people who want to partake of it yeah. to understand because if you aren't making money, then how is it that you then want to talk to people about how mm. they can benefit? Absolutely. From, yes. Mm. You need to make money to convince people that you can provide a service that will help them with their money yeah. in order that mm. they too can make money. Don't you think so? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So it will only be, um, it's brilliant to say so, you'll see funded income. Mm. So this would be, uh, um, let me, no, that's, that's a bit, mm. let me use layman language. Mm. So money from loans mm. and money from transaction yeah. fees. Yeah. Yeah. That would be it. That is how it comes. So that's how banks make money. Yes. Yeah. I think Africa can be excited about the future. Um, yeah. Africa can be excited about today. Africa's young people can be excited about today in terms of what's happening. And I mean, great minds coming together with future looking institutions to deliver solutions that will work for business, that will work for young people, that will work for the continent. Um, Cairo Mohoya and Jane Jelligat, thank you for joining us on the conversation this morning. You've been in the hot seat and you've delivered beautifully. Thank you so much for being here today as we've had that conversation.